Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor and I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and welcome to the review of the Alpha 7 IV. Now it's been three and a half years since the A7 III was first launched so we've got a lot to cover because this is not a minor upgrade. We've got so many new features to discuss. First up it's got the brand new 33 megapixel sensor and this is, um, this is a big improvement for me as a stills photographer and I'll cover the reasons why uh, in the presentation. The whole body has had some attention. We've got those dual card slots which the a7 III had. Now the a7 III had uh, one fast SDXC2 card slot and one older slower card slot. Now the second card slot, the lower slot on this camera is SDXC2 but this slot 1 will now take CF Express Type A cards as well as SDXC2 cards and that CF Express Type A gives the camera some amazing performance features. For instance, it's almost got a limitless buffer. We can record 800 plus RAW and JPEG images uh, without the camera slowing down at 10 frames per Per second. Now I would promote using the CF Express Type A card for your RAW images and the SDXC2 slot for recording your JPEGs. Now I was recording 1800 plus images before the camera was slowing down so I suspect that 800 plus it would be for shooting uncompressed RAW. So you might want to also uh, grab one of those um, updated card readers or you could just connect the super fast USB um, 3.2 uh, cable directly to the camera and we can now offload um, 80 gigabytes of files in just over one minute to your computer. So this is an amazing uh, speed upgrade from the A7 III camera. Now we have a Beyond's XR processor to, to facilitate this speed. Now we have great weather sealing on this camera. I think it's uh, probably uh, improved over the a7 III. I was shooting in torrential rain for over three hours and uh, the camera didn't uh, skip a beat there. Now on the top of the camera, and I'll go into this into some more detail, we now have the three um, memories on the shoot mode dial. You may see that uh, we, we um, on that shoot mode dial, there appears to be missing the movie and the S and Q slow and quick settings. These now are on a separate dial and this is a great um, feature for the ergonomics of the camera and actually working with the camera because we can now uh, switch from stills to movie mode and then choose the exposure mode for the movies or the slow and quick um, actually on the shoot mode dial. We don't have to deep dive into the menus to choose manual or program or shutter speed priority for that movie mode. Uh, so this is a great improvement. You'll also notice a dedicated uh, movie button for shooting movies which we can reprogram for um, uh, when we're shooting stills for a custom button. I would typically uh, reprogram that for ISO auto minimum shutter speed where, uh, for my own particular workflows. You'll, need, uh, you'll notice also on the top of the camera the exposure compensation dial seems to have no numbers uh, printed on it. It is an exposure compensation dial by default but you could reprogram it for 14 other functions. In fact all three dials on the top of the camera including the front dial, rear dial and that exposure compensation dial can all be reprogrammed for up to 15 different functions. Now we'll see that when we go in and start uh, assigning functions to uh, those dials including the dial on the back of the camera so that's that's a quad navy system uh, including that control wheel on the back we can see that we can program certain functions for program aperture priority and shutter priority but different functions for those dials when we're shooting in manual mode and we can also program different functions when shooting in movie mode so we have a uh, great flexibility for for um, customizing this camera like no other alpha before it. So essentially it looks a little bit like an A7S 3 body but it certainly has some improvements from the A7S 3 body. Now other improvements and other carryovers from the A7S 3 is also the heatsink. Uh, the Sigma heatsink which stops uh, the A7S 3 from overheating when recording 4K. That um, great facility will also now be inherited by the A7 IV camera.
So here I'm also uh, able to shoot different settings for stills and movies. So if you've been shooting stills with a high shutter speed and then you move over to movie mode, you will not have to be inflicted by that high shutter speed, which is inappropriate for capturing movies because you can assign different settings for movies and stills. And so you never have to remember to switch on your picture profile because that is also contained in the different settings that we would have assigned to stills and movies. So let's go back to the movie. Now I've got some big numbers here because it's got that XAVC S 4K 60p, that would be 50p in a PAL region, 200M 422 10-bit. Now if you're prepared to um, capture movies in the intra-frame, well that's the XAVC S i 4k 60p that's 600m so the very very low compression on the movie file so this is pro quality uh, movie recording at the higher frame rate that has been requested for such a long time by alpha owners so no overheating uh, basically you will uh, capture um, movie footage until the card is full now one of the other great features about the uh, a7 IV camera is we can also do 4K USB streaming. So if you connect this camera to um, uh, applications like Zoom, you can pick up the camera and the, uh, the microphone on the camera whilst you're USB streaming. So you're going to have 4K footage being streamed live when you're doing your um, streaming. Now let's take a look at the s and Q. Now the s and Q has a dedicated dial. Let's remember that's slow and quick. So we can quickly change between uh, shooting maybe 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. If we need to do some uh, high frame rate uh, movie capturing, we just need to slide the dial to s and Q. Now the only downside that I've seen perhaps in this a7 IV camera is we don't have um, uh, 100 or 120 frames per second in 4K. We can only do that uh, 50 or 60 frames per second in 4K. We will need to drop down to HD to get that 100, 120 frames per second. So that's really the only negative I've seen uh, in reviewing this particular camera. Now most Alpha owners uh, who have uh, seen the new menu structure for the A7S III and A1 were probably wondering whether we'd get the new menus for the A7 IV and that is a yes, we have that new menus. Much easier to navigate once you've uh, got a little bit familiar about where things are, are now uh, contained by individual color coded tabs. So I, I have a, an ebook which will help you quickly get up to speed uh, with these new menu structures. We also have the uh, dual FN menus and uh, yes we have that um, vary angle uh, touch screen for accessing the menus as well as controlling focus settings as well. So that is another great improvement for this camera. We have the much requested focus area color, sometimes referred to as focus frame color. We now have the choice of a bright white or bright red focus frame. So you'll never lose your spot AF point uh, when using the A7 IV camera. So that is a big plus and uh, uh, we've, some people have waited a long time for this one, but the A7 IV now covers it. Now we did get animal IAF with the A7 uh, three camera but you had to choose between animal IAF and uh, uh, the lock-on AF per performance uh, where with the um, A7 IV camera we can have animal IAF and AF tracking enabled at the same time. So I've done a 1-1 one -one, uh, magnification on this uh, running dog and you can quite quickly see the focus is exactly where it needs to be. The tip of the nose is out of the depth of field or depth of focus and the focus is tracking very reliably on the eyes of this dog that's running towards me. 
and we have bird IAF as well and if you need any proof that the bird IAF is uh, worth having just look at this image of this wattle bird that I've captured coming towards the camera with that beady red eye in sharp focus. Uh, it's not just um, great for birds in flight, it's also uh, great for birds nestled in amongst foliage and, and twigs and branches of a tree. If the camera sees that it's a bird that's behind all of these branches and foliage then it's just going to pop the focus right onto the eye without having to select a small spot AF point. You could be in wide um, focus area for instance and so long as the camera sees that there's a bird there it will just thread the eye of the needle through all of that foliage and branches and uh, get pin sharp focus on that bird which is the inset of this slide that I'm showing. We also have touch tracking. Okay, so this is great for movie um, shooters. Now we can just, uh, once we've uh, enabled touch operation, which would be the C4 key by default, the little trash can key there at the bottom right hand corner of the camera, we can then cycle through three touch operations. Touch focus is where we can pull focus between different uh, objects or subjects in the frame. Touch tracking, where we can just touch the subject and then let the subject move around the frame. Alternatively, we could move, but it'll just hold focus on that particular subject. And then touch again to cancel uh, the tracking. So we've got three cycling options on that touch operation. Really simple to use. So what I would recommend is just choosing the wide AF area switching the touch operation on and then just tapping with your finger to control focus. We also have seven uh, different speeds of focus now, not just three, but we can control how quickly we pull focus when we're using the touch focus option. Uh, so occasionally we might want to uh, just pull focus really sm uh, slowly and smoothly and other times maybe when we're doing a, a rock video or whatever we might need to pull snap focus very quickly between different subjects. Even the image review has had a makeover of the number of options we can have and uh, the one that most people will welcome is this ability to crop JPEGs in camera. So if you're shooting RAW and JPEG you can quite quickly go into the JPEG option. Using the rear dial we can change the aspect ratio. So I've gone from 3-2 aspect ratio to 16-9 aspect ratio which is the same shape as the most monitors and then I can just then use the rear control wheel to zoom in uh, onto that subject. And so and then we can quickly share that uh, directly from the camera without having to wait to edit that in a computer. We can even use that aspect ratio to switch from horizontal to vertical and then just take out a vertical 2-3 uh, aspect ratio from that horizontal 3-2 aspect ratio. And of course um, the camera uh, is absolutely great at tracking. Uh, of course the A7 III dates back to 2018 with the older lock-on AF um, uh, tracking algorithms. Now in 2019 we got a major upgrade making the tracking much stickier and as you can see with these running dogs we, um, we have great reliability for tracking quickly moving subjects especially with that animal or IF um, helping out as well. One of the other great things about um, many of the recent alpha cameras is the ability to control the, the flash that is on the camera but also off camera flash or whole different banks of different flash units. We can control that from the monitor or the finder. We don't need to be looking at a commander on the top of the camera. We can do that directly uh, through the menus by just going to external flash control and we have complete control over a whole range of flash units. We also have the option that uh, has appeared on the Alpha 9 II and the Alpha 1 which is to close the shutter uh, when powering down. So this uh, will help keep dust out of the camera when we're changing lenses. So this isn't on by default but you can just go to the anti-dust function and then shutter when power uh, off uh, switch that to on and then the shutter will close allowing you to change lenses without getting dust inside of the camera. 
So let's take a look at uh, the magnificent uh, 7K feature, 7,000 um, pixels, 7,008 pixels on the widest dimension. So many people will often, with tw when using 24 megapixel sensors, uh, resort to having to use teleconverters on the 70 to 200, 100, 400 uh, um, zoom lenses to get closer because we don't have great opportunity to crop aggressively in post-production. So yes, we can use the teleconverters and I've had very good uh, success at uh, tracking with the 1.4 teleconverter uh, when testing and reviewing this camera. But we can also crop in camera or crop in post-production. We can even crop in camera and then crop again in post-production. What we're looking at here, the outer white line is the 7K resolution of the A74 sensor. The, um, the, um, the middle um, white line is the boundary for APS-C mode. And then 4K, that's 3840 pixels on the longest dimension is that inner white line. So you can see we have great flexibility to crop um, uh, after already cropping in camera. So this uh, two times crop in post-production would uh, essentially give us the reach on our 70 to 200 lens, uh, give us the equivalent reach of a 400 mil lens by just simply cropping more aggressively in post-production. And so long as we're using good G or GM glass, we're going to uh, not lose any quality. We're going to basically count each whisker and hair on this dog, even though we've cropped quite aggressively when using the uh, Alpha 7.4 camera. So to give you some comparisons about how much more flexibility we have over and above an A7 III using a 24 megapixel sensor, this was um, uh, when I was reviewing the Alpha 7 III. The, uh, the amount of uh, uh, buffer uh, wasn't long enough to, co uh, to cover a complete rodeo, successful rodeo ride. Um, and so I dropped down to APS-C mode to increase the size of the buffer. And uh, yes, I've got the subject in frame, but I don't have enough uh, resolution to straighten this crooked image. The, um, the 4K crop is very tight uh, to the, um, the APS-C mode, where of course with the, uh, the new Alpha 7.4, we've got a much more generous flexibility to be able to crop again in post-production to get that 4K export. So there is the uh, two times crop. You can do this in camera, you can do this in post, but there is a two times crop on that running dog. And uh, you can essentially get four images uh, from one capture that each one of those from each separate corners would be um, a high resolution image suitable for 4K viewing. And of course, there we see the uh, rich fine detail. I will, I will put a link to the uh, high resolution uh, files because there will be a little bit of movie compression on these, just eroding a little bit of the quality. And if you're not viewing this uh, video in 4K, then you might like to take the opportunity to switch now as I showcase some more examples. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier panning a camera in just a horizontal mode without turning the camera vertically. But with the resolution of the Alpha 7.4, we can take a high resolution uh, vertical image from the horizontal image that we've been capturing whilst panning the camera. So this is the greater flexibility of the 33 megapixel sensor for still shooters. So Sony are claiming 15 stops dynamic range. So we're not um, losing any dynamic range by having that increased resolution. So this was a little bit difficult for me to test with a pre-production model because I only had access uh, to the raw files through the um, Sony's Imaging Edge software. But this is a, a, a great example of dynamic range. I'm having to uh, underexpose the image to uh, retain rich detail in the highlights. I'm shooting into the sun uh, with this dog charging through these waves on the beach. And um, so uh, the, when I come to open up the shadows, yes, we've got great detail. Now we've got an extreme subject brightness range shooting into those very hot highlights. 
which have a rich detail and also the dog has rich detail so I fully expect the dynamic range to be as Sony quote is that 15 stop dynamic range and also on this image you can also see the um, the camera is tracking this dog beautifully uh, with that animal IAF and the AF tracking both enabled so let's uh, concentrate a little bit more on the making movies. There is very little compromise on uh, capturing movies with this uh, A7 IV camera. We have the active steady shot. So for people who uh, are, are good at just walking very smoothly, you wouldn't necessarily need to put this camera on a gimbal because active steady shot will give you that very smooth footage. So you could walk with the camera and um, get this uh, smooth footage that we would expect from when we've mounted the camera in a gimbal. So we also have the option of switching steady shot off and then stabilizing the footage in post-production using Sony's free uh, soft, uh, software called Sony Catalyst. The gyro data from the sensor is used to stabilize the footage in post-production. We also have the new uh, multi-interface shoe which uh, accepts the digital microphones that Sony has been producing. That is the digital shotgun microphone, the ECM-B1M. Now I have to, have to say most um, uh, microphones that you would uh, uh, have been using are analog uh, microphones that convert the signal to digital where these are digital microphones that pass on a digital signal uh, to the uh, video file. We also have access to the wireless microphone system which we can use as a, a lapel microphone which is the ECM-W2BT which is a, a Bluetooth system for uh, wireless um, production there. So we got this uh, uh, really high audio quality uh, when using the A7 IV and its new multi-interface shoe. We also have uh, two new features called AF Assist and Focus Map. So I'll show you the first one. If we just look at the uh, chart on the extreme right of this slide, whatever is blue is behind the depth of field, whatever is uh, orange or red is in front of the depth of field. Now I would just enable the Focus Map in the FN menu and I'll just uh, showcase this. So what we're doing now is we're pulling focus to the uh, the foreground subject and now we're going to pull focus um, to the middle and then the background and focus assist is helping me do that because I'm in autofocus but focus assist is allowing me just to uh, rotate uh, the focus ring on the lens and move that focus and then um, the autofocus will take over when I I'm close to that subject. We also have something which is, I have to say, quite frankly, amazing, and that is breathing compensation. Now, a lot of people who are purchasing um, lenses, which have been primarily designed for stills photographers, they will often notice something called um, uh, focus breathing. This is where your subject might appear to change scale uh, as we change focus. So I'll give you an example of focus breathing and then show the, um, the uh, breathing compensation switched on and show you the difference. Okay, so that is the focus breathing on, uh, on the uh, FE 20mm f1.8. We'll now go into the menus and switch breathing compensation to on. And now we'll do the same thing with that breathing compensation. And wow, isn't that amazing? So we've now got that um, uh, modification through um, uh, lens compensations. So that's a, a great uh, new feature there. So the um, lenses that are, uh, are supporting that breathing compensation are a whole uh, range. There's about 15 lenses listed by Sony at the moment, which is a range of G Master and G lenses which uh, support this uh, breathing uh, compensation uh, firmware fix, if you like. We also have uh, Picture Profile 11, so there's been a lot of um, uh, positive reviews about the S Cinetone Picture Profile 11, and the A7 IV has that new Picture Profile.
We also have now uh, for still shooters, we have um, a silent mode that's not just using the electronic shutter but using a completely silent mode which um, silences every uh, aspect of the camera that could possibly make a noise. Things like um, the uh, aperture drive in AF, we can go silent priority in autofocus. Uh, when powering down if we've um, enabled that uh, shutter to close when we go into silent mode that will temporarily be disabled and also the auto pixel mapping will be disabled when we're using that silent mode so when we turn the camera off and we're on maybe uh, standing next to a professional um, uh, golf player where we're not going to make any minor click or a noise disturbance when we power the camera down when we've selected silent mode on the camera. Now one of the things I'm not too sure whether this is a new feature or not because I've been using a pre-production model with a beta version of the firmware I noticed uh, when I was looking at the version which is 0.02 the release version will be a 1.0 I noticed that there was um, a button there which said software update so I'm not too sure whether Sony are planning now to enable software updates via a file placed on a memory card I'm sure this will be um, um, a welcome change for many people especially Apple users who sometimes struggle with updating their firmware on their camera so this is something I definitely want to see flow through to uh, the production model of the camera so this is a case of watch this space so another thing that um, I, I, I first saw on the Alpha 7R4 camera, possibly because I asked uh, Sony to uh, add this to their cameras uh, when I visited uh, Sony in Tokyo in early 2019, was the ability to save every single setting of the camera to a file on the memory card. So that's things like the FN menus, the custom keys, the My menus, the, the uh, options on the shoot mode dial, save them all to a single file um, that we can place on a uh, memory card. This will allow um, you to back up all of your settings and then rest restore them from that file or as I do I share my cam set files with other users uh, typically on my patreon.com website I will share that my cam set files for the latest model cameras. Now this great feature unfortunately didn't work its way through to the Alpha 7C so I was unsure whether Sony would be enabling this feature for what is essentially an entry level full frame camera and I'm pleased to say that yes they have enabled this so uh, I will be able to uh, after we get version 1 the, uh, the, um, the release uh, version of the firmware I will be able to uh, share a cam set file with my uh, patrons and that will Will enable them to set up the entire camera the way that I've set up my camera. Now uh, if you're looking at um, maybe accessing um, uh, my support materials which will include a 520 page ebook for the Alpha 74 camera then just head over to uh, patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. You'll have access to a number of ebooks not just a camera specific ebook um, to help you uh, set up your own camera but also um, post-production ebooks, photography ebooks, uh, um, color management management ebooks I've got a whole range of ebooks that you can download I've also got act very active Q&A forums for helping people resolve certain uh, issues or uh, just questions about um, how to set up the camera we also have monthly uh, uh, member only seminars one hour seminars I, I pick a, a topic each month and then we'll deliver that as a, a like a mini lecture uh, to my patrons. I will also share the raw files um, that I've um, shooting when I'm reviewing a lens or a camera I'll share raw files with my patrons and of course those cam set files as well. Now there are no contracts or commitments you sign up for a $10 monthly fee you take what you want and then just uh, unsign and you won't uh, get incur a second pay 
So that A7 ebook, as I said, will be a 520 page ebook which will go into detail for each of the uh, um, camera settings. I also like to um, uh, show people how to get groups of settings to save or um, record memories. So um, the ideal settings for shooting landscape, portrait, action sport, birds in flight, so I get the right groups of settings, not just talking about an individual menu item, but how that menu uh, item sits in context with the other menu items required to shoot a particular genre of photography. And as I said, that's 520 pages. So if you've got a little bit of time, we can look at um, some of the details here. Uh, uh, the sensor, it's up from 24 to 33 megapixels. We've got a much more generous APS-C mode size now. We've got the fast reliable AF tracking using the uh, the newer uh, AF tracking algorithms that were released in 2019 with uh, human animal and bird IF we also go down to minus 4 EV so the camera is much more able to uh, uh, focus uh, reliably in low ambient light than the a7 III we have almost a limitless buffer. Uh, Sony are quoting 800 plus RAW and JPEGs in continuous burst uh, using that CF Express Type A card. We have the touch operation, vary angle, high resolution monitor. We have three memories on the shoot mode dial instead of the two that the A7 III had. We have a customizable exposure compensation dial. I put tri-navi here, but if you include the control wheel on the back of the camera, that's four dials that we can customize for any particular um, job that you have in hand. We have the dual FN menus, the focus area color and the anti-dust function. We have a, a, a new higher resolution 3.6 million dot EVF. We have a faster Wi-Fi connection up from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We have a faster USB 3.2, double the speed of the USB on the A7 III camera. We have 4K, 60p, 200m or 600m, 422, 10-bit uh, video files. We have live streaming, including the camera's digital microphone. Uh, we have uh, digital audio and active steady shot. We have touch tracking, AF assist, focus map, uh, separated movie settings. We have the new S Cinetone picture profile and breathing compensation. So that is no minor upgrade. I dare say there's going to be somebody out there saying this wasn't enough, but it is a lot and I'm only I haven't had time to cover every single upgrade just uh, the key uh, upgrades in this particular review so I'm not going to go through these in uh, all detail but just look at the darker blue shots uh, we saw many um, uh, firmware improvements when uh, we saw the a7c um, camera released in late uh, 2020 but uh, we've uh, got much more improvements uh, with the a7 IV above and beyond the Alpha 7C such as the active steady shot, the focus breathing, the focus assist, the focus map and the streaming with the camera's microphone included. So uh, all in all a major upgrade for um, anybody who's maybe even got the Alpha 7C camera. So this really is a camera for all reasons. It, it is uh, described by Sony as an entry-level full-frame camera but I don't think it's a compromised camera in any way. I would be more than happy to uh, recommend this camera for landscape shooters, street shooters, action sports shooters. It does lend itself to all of the genres uh, and including movie making as well. And I'll just go out on a couple of high resolution files. This is uh, me shooting in the heavy downpour uh, with, uh, and as I was saying, it didn't miss a beat even when it got absolutely drenched um, and I was shooting uh, reliably uh, I was shooting with the uh, new 70 to 200 mark 2 version of the lens testing that as well and uh, I started shooting a lot of the uh, delivery riders uh, delivering food because no one was venturing out in the downpour that we were experiencing in Melbourne this spring 
so I will include links to these 4k and 6k files uh, through my Flickr Pro account so you will be able to zoom in and check uh, the quality of the files produced by this camera so as I said uh, remember I am over on patreon.com and uh, a reminder that there are no contracts no commitments it's just ten dollars to sign up for a month take what you need and then you can unsign from there so hopefully you found this a74 review um, interesting if so just give me the thumbs up subscribe and hopefully I'll catch you over on patreon.com okay cheers I'm Mark Gaylor Sony Imaging Ambassador